Welcome to a video on the area bounded by two polar graphs. Our goal is to determine the area of a region bounded by two polar curves. So if we have two polar equations where r1 is equal to f of theta and r2 is equal to g of theta, and f of theta is always greater than or equal to g of theta, greater than or equal to zero, then the area bounded by these two polar curves is going to be equal to one half times the def integral from alpha to beta of f of theta squared minus g of theta squared d theta. If we want, we can also rewrite this in terms of r. Where we'd have r1 squared minus r2 squared d theta. These two are equivalent. Let's go and take a look at an example. We want to find the area of the shaded region bounded by r equals two, which is the circle in blue, and r equals four cosine theta, which is the circle in red. So it's pretty easy to see in this problem that the outer curve will be the red curve and the inner curve will be the blue curve. So we'll have to integrate from here to here, where the integrand will be four plus cosine theta squared minus two squared. Or if we wanted to, we could just integrate from here to here and then double the area. And I think that's what we'll do. But first we have to determine what alpha and beta will be, which would be the limits of integration. Well, our lower limit of integration will be zero radians along the pole here and now we have to figure out what angle we would be at over here where these two graphs intersect. We can pretty clearly see from the graph that it's going to be pi over three radians, but we can go ahead and set these two equations equal to each other to determine that angle. Let's go ahead and show that. When would two equal four cosine theta? The solution should give us this point here and also this point here, even though we don't need it because we're gonna start at theta equals zero. So we'll divide both sides by four. And we have when is cosine theta equal to one half. So theta would be pi over three or negative pi over three. But again, we're already starting at zero. So we'll integrate from zero radians to pi over three radians. So let's go ahead and set this up. Again, we decided to find this area here and then double it to find the total area. So we'll have the area is gonna be equal to two times one half times the def integral from zero to pi over three of the outer curve squared which will be four cosine theta squared minus the inner curve squared which is two squared d theta. The graphing calculator always gives a nice visual of these limits of integration. So let's go ahead and check this on the graphing calculator. Let's make sure that we are in degree mode and polar mode. We're going to press y equals and type in our two functions. R1 will be four cosine theta. And R2 will be equal to two. And before we press graph, let's check our window. Since we are in degrees, we'll go from zero to 360 for theta. Our step is 1.5. And now we'll go ahead and just press zoom square, which is zoom option four. Now if we press trace, we can see when theta is equal to zero, we're out here at this point, which corresponds to this point here. We just want to make sure this point of intersection here is pi over three or 60 degrees. So we can just press the right arrow, and hold it down if we want. And we can see right at 60 degrees or pi over three radians, we are where we thought we should be. Okay, let's go ahead and evaluate this definite integral to find the area of the shaded region. So two times one half, that'll give us one. If 
4 cosine squared theta will give us 16 cosine squared theta. And then we'll have minus 4. Now we know by now we have to apply a power reducing formula for cosine squared theta. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll have 16 times 1 plus cosine 2 theta divided by 2 minus 4. 2 and the 16 simplify. So we have this will be 8 plus 8 cosine 2 theta and then minus 4. So we can combine the 8 and the minus 4. We'll have 4 plus 8 cosine 2 theta. Let's go ahead and continue this on the next slide. Let's go ahead and integrate. We are going to have to perform u substitution here. So we'll have an extra factor of 1 half since u is equal to 2 theta, du is equal to 2d theta. So d theta is equal to 1 half du. So this antiderivative would be 4 theta plus 8 times 1 half sine 2 theta. So let's go ahead and sub in pi over 3. This will be plus 4 sine pi over 3 times 2 will be 2 pi over 3 minus, and then when theta is equal to 0, these will both be 0. Let's go ahead and sketch a quick reference triangle for 2 pi over 3. We're going to be over here in the second quadrant. So we'll have negative 1, 2, square root 3. So we'll have 4 pi over 3 plus 4 times the sine of 2 pi over 3 will be square root 3 over 2. And of course, minus 0. So we're going to have 4 pi over 3 plus 2 square root 3 as the area bounded by the red curve and the blue curve as we see here. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. We'll take a look at a second example uh, in part two. I hope you found this helpful.